Hey everybody, hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. I am getting ready to start the Calico Garden Quilt by Lori Holt from Be In My Bonnet. And I just wanted to take you through my process of how I'm going to do my applique on the quilt. It is very, very different from Lori Holt's. And for anyone who is watching, I have purchased all of the fabric. I have purchased all of the simple shapes and everything that needs to go with the quilt. I have purchased all of that. None of this was given to me and I uh, am I'm not people see this method and sometimes they get a little confused but it is it is just because they hear the word trace and they think that oh my goodness you know somebody's stealing something and I'm not okay if anybody is making this right along with me you uh, would need to purchase your own fabric and uh, simple shapes the only thing that is free is the sewing guide that is put out by Riley Blake who is the manufacturer of the fabrics for the quilt. I will link to the page where you can find the download and you can put that in your favorites if you want to. Also with the sewing guide, I wanted to let you know that the sewing guide simply tells you what shapes need to be used on what blocks and then what fabrics you'll use for that shape. The instructions for cutting and piecing each block will be on Lori Holt's blog. It is beinmybonnetco.blogspot.com and I will link to that below as well. It is in my favorites on my browser. I recommend you do the same so that you can get to it easily each week. If it's just doing applique on a block, we can kind of follow the picture and figure out what's gonna happen. But if we have pieced blocks, we'll have to wait to do that block with Lori and get the cutting and piecing instructions at that time. The way I do my Lori Holt quilt, any applique quilt, essentially what we're doing is we are automating the applique process. I will trace around the simple shape and then I am going to scan that page into the Brothers Scan and Cut and upload all of those traced images to the brother canvas and then I will save them there and that's where I will reach for them when it's time to use that particular shape. The beauty of doing this is you only have to trace the shape one time if the shape is used multiple times in different designs or different blocks you've already traced it and scanned it and you have it on hand. So there are two things that we're going to do with the file that's created by the scan and cut when you scan in those simple shapes. One, we're going to be able to cut all of our fabric using the brother scan and cut. So I no longer have to do scissors or anything like that to trim all of this out manually. And then number two, that file, the FCM file created by the scan and cut will be imported into the software and the software with the click of one button is going to create an applique embroidery design. And we are going to be using our embroidery machines to put all of this together. Those shapes will be imported into a software called Simply Applique or BES4. Simply Applique is a module that was extracted from the, the mother software is BES4. This software is by Pace Center. BES4 is a little bit more than twice the price of Simply Applique. Again, Simply Applique is just a module that has been extracted out of BES4. It has limited capabilities, but it does this process very well. And what I'm explaining can be done with any brand of home embroidery machine, regardless of it doesn't have to be a brother or a baby lock. And the scan and cut will do this and the resulting file works with every home embroidery because the machine. software changes it into the format for your machine. So I don't want anybody to feel like I don't have a brother machine so I can't do this because this is really a lot of fun and it is an amazing simple process. 
BES4 and Simply Applique only work on Windows machines. If you have a Mac, you can purchase Embrilliance Stitch Artist 2 and it will do the very same thing with the click of one button. You do not need to purchase Stitch Artist 1 first. Stitch Artist 2 includes all of the tools that are in Stitch Artist 1. So that may be something, or if you already have Embrilliance, because Embrilliance works on both Windows and Mac machines, if you already have Embrilliance and you don't want to buy another software you have to learn, then you may just want to get Stitch Artist 2 and add that into your Embrilliance library and be able to play around with that. So that is also an option, and I will show you how to do that as well. The camera down to the table here. What I have done is I have sorted all of my simple shapes into piles of tens. Some of them are off camera and you can't see. So over here I have zero through 10. Here are the teens, the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, etc. And I just went through all of my piles and made sure I had all of the shapes in that pile. You don't have to necessarily count you know, and line them up 21, 22, 23. I just counted and made sure I had 10 shapes in each pile. That's all you really have to do, except for the 80s. There are 88 shapes, and so you'll only have eight of them in your pile of 80s, and I have all 88 shapes, so I'm a happy girl. So what I did is numerically, I took a Crayola marker. This is the black one. And I recommend either the black one, the brown one, the navy blue, or if you don't have any Crayola markers, you can use a number two pencil, but make sure your line is very dark. Don't go light on it. And you want to trace around these shapes. And I'd like to point out about what the line needs to look like in order to get this done. I did number each one so that they are sequential on the page. And I'm doing this so that I can find them easily in the Brother Canvas. And I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Let's zoom in and take a look at the lines. What the Scan and Cut takes a picture of is the outside of the line. And that's what you're mostly concerned with. If you get a perfect tracing where it doesn't have any squiggles, that's okay. If you get an imperfect tracing, like look at this one right here. I got a little tiny little line right there that kind of sticks out because I squiggled. It's fine. It, it doesn't matter. You don't have to redo it. It just will work just fine. And you can see where maybe I stopped and started. If, if it goes inside and you make a big squiggle inside, don't worry about it. If it goes to the outside and you make a big squiggle, I mean a big squiggle, you may want to start over on that particular shape. But this is just to let you know, your shape does not have to be exactly perfect in order for it to work. What it does have to be is an enclosed shape. The Scan and Cut does not like to have lines that are not enclosed. And if you come across where you scanned it in and then you look at it on the canvas and you realize that it is not enclosed, like the line is not fully closed up, you can draw a line on canvas. That can be tricky unless you play around with it and you're pretty familiar with Brother Canvas. Or you could just uh, fix the line yourself on your page and scan it again. And that's probably a lot easier than fiddling around on Canvas. If you don't want to save it in Canvas, you can save this in the Scan and Cut. Then you can save it all to a USB if you like. You can do that as well. You can save it to the machine or you can save it to a USB, whatever you like. It is easier to do it in Brother Canvas because when I scan in these pages, I will actually, every time, I'll be able to get a straight line at the bottom of the scan, and that is the bottom of the paper. The machine sees that 
If you get any kind of loose anything, the machine will see it. So when you are scanning these, I'm going to be using the Brother Scanning Mat. The scanning mat is a plain mat that has no stick to it at all, but it has a clear cover over it. And it allows you to slip in your tracings and just scan it in no problem. If you do not have a scanning mat, and I will link to all of this below, if you don't have a scanning mat, you can use the Brother Low Tack Mat. That is the turquoise one, and it says Low Tack Mat down here at the bottom. You can put paper on this mat and it will come off. It might hold a little bit, but not so much that it's going to ruin the mat. Do not put paper on the standard tack mat, which is the purple mat, and it says standard right here. There's also a gold mat. Don't put paper on these unless they have like little to no sticky left in them okay? because it won't want to come off and you will spend a lot of time scrubbing your mat. If you don't have the low tack or the scanning mat, and this might be the only mat that you have, you can tape a piece of silicone, like, like an oven liner on here, okay, without the cover, of course. You can tape it to the sides with scotch tape. Put a piece of oven liner on here and then tape your, your tracing sheet to that. You can also try using a piece of parchment paper and tape the parchment paper to the outside and then tape the, the tracing piece to the parchment paper if it'll stick. It might not want to because that's the whole point of parchment paper, right? So there are some options available if you do not have those things. This is a great activity. If you're sitting in front of the TV, you can just sit there and trace your shapes. I do recommend tracing them in numerical order so they are easy to find. That will make your life much, much easier as we go. So when I finish scanning all of these in, they are going into my Ziplocs and I will mark each baggie with the numbers of the pieces that are in there. That's just for me to do that so that if I need to find one again, I don't have to search through 88 of them to do it. And then I will be keeping them all together in the bag again and storing them in my Simple Shapes zipper bag in the binder. Keep in mind, the more shapes you get on one page, the fewer scans you have to do. But what I did do was I, put 50 through 55 on this page and 56 through 59 on this page so that all of the 50s are contained within just two pages. So the 60s will go on another page. I didn't put 60 and 61 on here. That, that will make it difficult to find when you're looking for it in the future. I've had people ask me when I did the Lori Holtz chicken salad if doing it this method increases the size at all of the design. It does not because even in Lori's method, you trace around the simple shape and then you cut a quarter of an inch away all the way around the shape on the fabric after you have sewn it on the line. So this is the identical process except now you're going to be able to have cut all of your fabric out using the scan in the scan and cut. So there is this entire process is going to be automated. Now, some of you might wonder, well, what if I don't have a great big hoop? We will get to that process as we go. I'm going to be stitching mine either on the Brother Luminaire, which has a 10 by 16 hoop if I need it, which I did for the chickens, or I will be doing it on the Brother 10 needle, the PR 1055. I don't recommend trying this in a five by seven. I, I think you might be a little bit frustrated. I mean, you can do it. A lot of these pieces, some of them are, you know, small enough to fit into a five by seven, but some of them are not. Some of them are quite large. For those of you with smaller hoops and you come across a large shape, you, this would have to be stitched down using a blanket stitch in the domestic sewing machine. And then what, what you would do is print out the embroidery piece 
not the whole thing put together, but piece by piece by piece, you want to print it out and then you would stick it where it needs to go on the background with the big piece already on it and then stitch and then embroider it then. So you're going to be using multiple hoopings to put all of this together. It's an extra challenge. It can be done. I've done it many times, but then you will end up being a uh, super hooper <laughs> by the time you're finished. And that's a good thing because it's a skill builder. Uh, you'll, you'll definitely have confidence that you can embroider just about anything that you can make fit in that hoop. And even if you can't. So it's, it, you know, it's going to be much easier if your hoop is an 8x12 or larger. But if, it's, if you've got a 5x7 or a 6x10, it can be done. It just requires uh, some extra steps to figure out where everything is going to go. And I will show you how to do that on one of the blocks. Maybe the first one, we'll see. All right, so now I'm going to trace around the shapes and then scan it in and show you how to manage what it is I'm gonna be doing. So here is my piece of printer paper and I am going to set these out in numerical order so I can find them. These are all the circles and this is zero, 01, zero two zero three four five we'll see how many we can get on a page um six and seven and then eight and nine will go on their own page and ten will go on its own page all right so i'm just going to go ahead and set these like this and take my Crayola marker. Oh, look, let me show you what I did. So I scribbled up on top of this one right here. See that? How I scribbled up on it? I'm just going to pop it into a soapy sink and let it dry. It'll come right off. So as simple as this is all you need. I like these markers because they dry really fast. Okay, so this is ready to be scanned in to the scan and cut. And see how I've got a little squiggle there outside of two? Not a big deal. It'll be fine. All right, we are over here at the scan and cut. First thing I'm going to do is load my mat. I just place this right up here, making sure to scrunch up against this one. This one seems to be a sensor of some sort and I'm going to hit the third button down which is the mat loading button. And let's zoom in on the menu. This is the main menu for the scan and cut. We have pattern and we have scan and it is scan that I want this time. I'm going to touch scan and I can do a direct cut which I don't want to do because I don't want to cut on my mat scan to cut data or scan to USB. Let me go back. I didn't mean to touch that. I'm going to scan to cut data and I'm just going to hit start. We've got some menu option choices here. This is outside only. This button is inside and outside and this button right here is regions, which you would use if you were doing colors. But what I want right now is inside and outside because I want to capture the number of the piece as well as the outside line. So I'm going to touch inside, outside. And then here on this menu page, you can resize the scan if you want. I don't want, I'm just going to touch OK because it's telling me now, see now there's that line it caught. I could pull this up and then it won't have the line in the scan. So, but now it wants me to preview it, which is an extra step. And it's just easier not to have to do that. So I'm going to tell it, okay. And now it's processing and it wants to know where do I want to save it? I can save it in the machine, USB, or I can save it to the cloud. And I want to save it to the cloud. It is much easier to do anything you need to do with these in the cloud. And it says save successful and I'm going to tell it, okay and I'm finished with it. That's all I have to do with each one of these pages from the tracing of the shapes. I would take my next page, I would hit home. 
Is it okay to delete all patterns? I'm going to tell it okay because I already saved it in the cloud. And now I'm ready to scan my next page. I am at canvasworkspace.brother.com and uh, this is my home page. I've already logged in. Again, you do not have to have a brother machine embroidery machine in order to do this. I just want to make that very clear. You can do this process on it with any home embroidery machine because they don't connect to one another. When you first log in, there are tabs across the top. There's all kinds of little designs and projects you can make and whatnot. But what I'm interested in is the My Projects tab. I'm going to click it. And it's going to bring up all of my recent scans and you can see what I have done. The scan I just did of the circles and here are the scans that I did of the 50s, those pieces that are numbered in the 50s. Let's go ahead and look at the circles and you can see it has given it a number of C4056. There are two buttons here. This is edit and download. So I want to edit and when you edit, this would be where you would remove any extraneous lines or dots or anything like that that might have gotten captured in the scan that you don't want. And everything looks fine here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's exactly what I'm after. All I'm going to do is rename this. And to do that, I'm going to come up here into the corner, just cover over that. And I'm going to type CG, which is Calico Garden. 01 through 07. And then I'm going to come over to the project tab. And there is an inbox with an arrow on it and a plus sign. I'm going to save it. And it's all done. But when I go back to my main projects, you can get there. This is clicking on this button gets you back to the home page. But I can go to my projects right here and click that. And here's where I can see all of my recent scans and whatnot. And I'll show you how to keep these from being duplicate. This one right here, let me pull this one in. I'm gonna highlight over all of these with my mouse and just hit delete. And then I wanna show you what I mean by cleaning up the scan. This is the scan 55. I just clicked off of it. And you can see on here, I've got a little I don't know what that is. That doesn't need to be there. So I'm going to click it, hover my mouse and just drag over it and hit delete on my keyboard. And then I'm going to get rid of this and hit delete on my keyboard. And that's it. Everything else I'm going to leave the same. And that's exactly what I did to save this one. See, when I hover over it, it says CG 50 through 55. And then this one is C. This is the name that the canvas gave it. C is for canvas. And then the three or four zeros and the 55. I can't see how many. I don't know my glasses on. All right. So let me show you how to get rid of multiples. I'm going to go back to canvas workspace up here in the top. And it, say, it says my changes may not be saved. That's okay. I've already saved everything I want. I'm going to click leave. And then I'm going to go to the My Projects tab. And this is where they all come up. Now, here is the raw scan of the, the 55. And here is the final scan of 50 through 55. I'm just going to hover over it and click the X. And it says the project will be deleted. I'm going to tell it OK and delete. And that way I don't have super bunches of multiples. You don't have to do that. Some people just like to clean things up a little bit. So since I already have CG01 through 07, I'm just going to click this. Whoop, wrong one. <laughs> I'm going to click this and hit delete. But even if I had deleted that one, I still had the raw scan that I could go back, clean up, rename, and it would be ready to go. So that is how I manage all of my scans when I am in the Brother Canvas. Once I'm in my projects and I want to open one of these up, let me go to edit. Let's say there is a shape where I need, um, I need this circle and I need this circle. And okay, that's all I need on that page. I'm gonna highlight all of these. I'm gonna delete them. 
And then I'm going to go to my projects and open them up right here. And now let's say I need something from, let's say I need piece number 55. So now I'm going to grab 55 and pull it off. And then I'm going to highlight everything, delete it. And then I'm going to put on 55. Let's, let's build us a little flower here. Okay. This, I'm just messing around to show you guys how easy this is. And there is my final design and it is ready to download. And then I can download it. I can save it if I want to call it whatever block it is. Then I would just change the name up here, go to project and, and save it differently. So I'll, let's do that. We will say test flower. All right. And I'm going to go to project and save it as another project. I'm not updating the current project. I'm saving it as a new project. And it says it's saved, completed. I'm gonna tell it okay. So see, I have not edited these original scans at all. They are still there and ready to be used over and over. And then I, if I hit on my projects, this is a refresh. I'm gonna click that. And there is my test flower right there. And to get rid of it, I go back to Canvas Workspace and go to my Projects tab. And I'm going to X out of my test flower and delete. And that's how you manage all of that. So that's it. You've got some homework to do to get ready to do this right along with me. And you need to be tracing those simple shapes and getting them scanned into the Brother Canvas and get everything organized. So we are ready to get started when the sew along starts on the 30th. Okay, we will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.